a couple of beaver tails. I'm, I've got a, an idea this year. I'm going to try to have some uh, hides tanned, but I'm going to just try to have them tanned with the leather so the fur off just to see what they look like. I, you know, I don't know what the fur market's going to look like this year. Um, it's been pretty crappy the last couple of years, so um, just trying to kind of experiment, see what other kind of creative or different things I can come up with. And this is, you know, beaver tails are not necessarily new or creative. I know there's people that skin them, but the vast majority don't. So I'm going to show you how to skin and flesh a beaver tail for, uh, for tanning. So to start with, we're going to skin all the way around the outside edge of the tail. Uh, so I'm just going to start with my knife, get my initial cut, and try to keep it as even and center as I possibly can. And actually, bring it right over here to the right to the edge of the table just so that I can work and now as you start to get to the tip you can see your knife blade there and it's uh the skin is very thin I mean the, the whole tail is pretty thin there so uh, this is where you just got to kind of go slow and steady and every once in a while you wind up cutting it where you didn't necessarily want to but I actually did that side pretty darn good if I say so myself I'm gonna flip it over I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side See there? It's so thin, that's not even a bad thin part, but I kind of jacked it up a little bit there, but we'll continue on. Maybe a little slower pace. And done it again. I'm struggling on this side. I did the other side so good. Let's see if we can get our cuts to meet up here at the top. So there we have it. Skinned all the way around. A couple of goof ups, but there'll be plenty more opportunities. So now the next thing I'm gonna do is skin the base of the tail back three or four inches. And this, I mean, this this tail, this is all gristle and got a bone running through the middle of it, but it's all just fat and gristle. And uh, it does not give. So you gotta you gotta cut everything you want. Flip it over and do the other side. So now I got me a, a good chunk there. So now, what's hopefully going to be the easy part, clamp this baby in my vise here. And then I'm going to 
tighten her down. Alright. Then I'm going to take me a pair of vice grips. And I'm going to grab the tail. Make sure, I hope it's tight enough. It should be. And then I'm just going to pull up. And it takes some pressure, no doubt. Bring out so you can see the whole shooting match. And there you have it. That's going to be the good looking side as long as I don't screw it up fleshing. Grab the other side and do the same thing. And you can see this side came off pretty clean. Got a little bit of gristle and fat right around the edges. So this side is probably going to come off with a lot more. For whatever reason, that is how it, they tend to come off. Came up with some, but it's not a terrible lot. So there you can see that's got a little bit more fat on it. But that's it. Now we'll go to the fleshing beam and flesh these. And I'll tell you, I've tried skinning where I actually skin the, uh, you know, skin the whole tail with a knife, and this locking in this vice grip and pulling with a pulling with pliers is so much easier. If you're at all interested in wanting to skin out some beaver tails this is how I would recommend do it. Just skin around the edges and get that base cut up to here and then skin the tails off. So now I'm going to take the tail, put it on my fleshing beam. I've got me another set of vice grips that I'm going to use to lock it and hold it in place. I've got my necker fleshing knife and I'm using the sharp side. And this is a this is very easy to mess up the tail here as well. Put you an extra cut you wasn't intending. So you want to use your sharp side and you got to slice that stuff off. And you got to get, you know, there, especially right here around the edge where it kind of cups, there's going to be a good little bit there. But you just you just kind of work that yeah and see there there you go I just kind of clip the whole end of the tail off so oh well ain't nobody ever made a tip of a beaver tail anything anyways have they anyway I have no idea on the proper fleshing amount or depth of a beaver tail um, but this top part gets pretty thin here and I'll flush it and it, it won't be quite as thin on the bottom I don't know if it's a uh, supposed to be like that or not but that's that's how I go and it really helps to you'll see I mean once you get down here especially to the, the kind of the base side and if you don't have that thing locked in um, on your if you don't have your vice grips locked in good it's not going to see there it slid on me trying to get that and what I found actually a lot of times at the base of that is going to be right where you cut and if you left a little hair on there that's where it'll hold it up more so what I'll do with this one is I'm going to double it over See if that'll give me tighten it down too, because that seemed pretty easy. Double it over and see if that'll give me a little bit of extra holding power. We almost got this side licked. You gotta be careful, you don't want to be jerky or pushy, because like I said, I mean this these tails are pretty darn 
fragile and uh, you'll cut it in a minute. And like I said, I'm no expert flesher, but that one right there is looking pretty good to me. I don't know what the heck I will do with some tan beaver tail, some beaver leather, beaver tail leather, but I'm going to try it and see how it turns out. So we can knock out this other half. This, this half has got definitely a lot more fleshing work to go. close right there and like I said you're going unless you are an expert flesher and even if you are you probably still want to cut some and gap some up a little bit Flip her over. That little cut there that I'm struggling to get all oh, that out of. All right. And there we have it. Two halves of a beaver tail. I'm going to salt them, and uh, I'll be sending them off to get them tanned. I, my my uh, history with tanning hasn't been that spectacular. I've struggled to get a good soft tan. I, I get a tan, but it's not a... It's not really something I've been satisfied with so far, something to throw over the back of the couch or hang on the wall. I just, I found that it for me it works better to let somebody know what they're doing handle the tanning so that's what i'll be doing with these